Uh, yeah, I guess uh, we have uh, Richard here uh, from the Rocco Steering Council. We have uh, Nick Logan here. Uh, we have Daniel Sockwell here. So that's four of us already. And I guess I have myself here. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're open for questions uh, for the Rocco Steering Council. Um, please fire away. Uh, and we have Fadim, of course. <laughs> so everybody agrees we're doing fine. Not sure that's how I'd interpret silence, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> If nobody asks a question, then I will help myself. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Maybe speak up a bit because you're really low on volume. Yeah. Frankly, I'm not sure which microphone is active even. So I'm I'm trying to be close to both at once and then maybe it will somehow work out. So I remember that I had three questions but obviously right now i only remember one that's still pretty good the other one will come. so uh, the basic principle seemed to be when rocco steering council came to be that one particular like personnel of the steering council is elected for one language version, like one one iteration. And language version 6D came out in 2018, I think. Yeah. The Raku Steering Council was created maybe in 2020. It's 2023. We still don't really know, uh, for all I'm concerned at least, we don't really know when we will get a language version uh, 6E. And I think, one particular problem with this is that basically, from what I understand, the Raku Steering Council is kind of competent in defining what a certain language version will look like. So I think this is like from from a you know from from a Montesquieu point of view, it's not really good that. Um, Basically, the steering council gets to decide how long they will be the steering council. And like there is no um, sort of uh, feedback or planability or like, I, I don't know. It's, it's like there is no accountability part here. And like uh, as the current, I mean, this is not the fault of the current members. I think this is more like broader technical governance problem, but what do like the current members think about it? Richard, did, did you want to respond to that? I saw your hand up. Oh, yeah. I saw Darren put his hand up first, but... Um... Well, well, let's let's respond to this question and then okay. we can take additional questions. We, we, I mean, you're... Obviously, yeah, I'm the steering council. Were you were you answering the question or, or yeah, asking another one? I think is that um, the the question does does concern the the council as well, um, and it was discussed. And in fact, um, that's why the next session is about governance. So it, it's it, you know how how do we take the 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 the, um, the community forward? It's it's not it's not a straightforward question really. Yeah, one thing I'd, I'd add to that is I think that that is a good point from a sort of institutional design perspective. Um, I think that it is mitigated slightly by the fact that the steering council is an unpaid and slightly thankless role. So I don't think that the risk of a steering council sort of scheming to stay steering council for a long time is as severe as if you were talking about, you know, running a country or, or other uh, Concern, you know, situations where people might really want to stay in that position. I think we've had more people leave the steering council because they, due to changes in job situation or or 
burnout or whatever, just don't have the time for it or the, the emotional energy or so I, I think that as a matter of institutional design, you're absolutely right that that is, is a flaw as a matter of practical, like how likely is it that a steering council will delay a language release because they really want to remain a steering council? Probably not that likely, but that doesn't mean it's not worth addressing as a, as a, you know, matter of a theory. Yeah, I mean, maybe a bit uh, like two things are mixed here because it's only one part, like we want to release a new version because we want to remain steering council. The other part would be like whether the steering council can lead us to a next version or like it's going in a good way. And if like the only particular feedback is like this language version is finished and then we get to give some sort of feedback then maybe it's a bit late if we are concerned about the language uh, version itself. If I can just uh, relate historically to this, uh, I don't think it was ever the intent that it was take, would take be, would be taking this long to get another la language release out. So when we designed whatever we had for the Rocco Steering Council, the idea was that a steering council would be responsible for bringing out a language level. And that seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, in retrospect, maybe not so, but uh, that's what we are currently have to live with. And I think I sincerely hope that we do get uh, a language release out next year. But yeah. So um, what I was going to say before, I'm not sure if this is more appropriate for this session or the next one, but I, even though in a sense, development is kind of slow, I'm wondering if it's worth Raku following the model of basically every other language, which is just have an annual release with, with whatever there is at the time. Um, I realize giving our numbering scheme, we'll have to figure out what to do after we get to Zed then, but uh, if we just do it annually, that may help resolve the issue of like, not knowing when to release like until you're trying to get to a certain feature set would that work just to do it annually with whatever there is well which probably means that 6e could probably just be cut off at some arbitrary point soon that's still an, op an option that we have indeed but I, I, the way I look at it is, is that if, if we if we start doing that, then we will actually maybe not never get all of the features in that we want to have in there. So yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's a bit of a waterbed, <laughs> and we do have every well not every month, but basically we have multiple releases every year. Well, I, technically, we, we do there have are a way to actually uh, limit our code to a certain Rakuto version. So, mm. yeah, Liz, I, I want to distinguish because I think that it is worth distinguishing between Raku and Rakuto releases. There are multiple Rakuto releases a year. There aren't multiple Raku releases. Um, so just just because I know some of the issues, and and this is something we'll talk about more in the next presentation, are uh, about keeping the the line between Raku and Rakuto clear. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, there is a way to pin to a specific Rakuto release, but I think that the idea of having more frequent um, Raku releases is is one that has gotten a lot of support um, in, in broader community discussions. And I, I agree with Liz that we're very much on track to have a, a 6E release next year whether or not we go to a model like that. So I don't think it's really that relevant to, to like, we're, since we're going to have a release next year without going to that model, we don't need to go to that model for 6E, but should we go to that model for versions after that? And and if so, should we change the naming scheme? I think that's a, a really good question and one that is worth worth some serious thought. And it it may be, as you said, it seems like a lot of other languages have gone to that model and there is a lot to recommend it. 
Although that being that being said, if I'm not mistaken, um, the monthly or quarterly Rakuto releases, they still in, they still include like portions of 6e or whatever is there at the time. They're just marked, they're just marked differently, but they're still basically in production soon. So in that sense, it's not like we're waiting indefinitely to get features. Um, in some ways, it's more just how I guess just how it's treated. Um whether yeah. it's like a preview or a final. Whereas with the other languages, it's basically it's the production releases once a year. Or or I mean, we could go even further. Rust has a uh release schedule that's not that different from the Bracudo schedule, where they have, I think, not monthly, but every six weeks they have a compiler release. And uh at the same time they have a release of the release build they also have a release of the preview um build as well so you know we could have a model where there's a certain version that is released in as supported and then a certain version that's released behind a preview uh feature flag but you know it, th those are implementation details i believe there's a problem solving issue right now discussing what uh dot preview should mean a as a version and just broader issues around around versioning so anyway i guess Without getting it bogged down into details, that. it is related. Getting... To that. Like if we release right. a vacuum module and we could easily declare this is the features that it uses or depends mm -hmm. on. Yeah. So without getting bogged down in the details, I think that that is a great question and one that that we should think about and one that is being discussed actively at the moment. Um. So um, I think also there's a um, um, a question that, that Daniel alluded to, and that is that you know it's it's a volunteer effort. The people who who are on the the council are there because they're actively working at it. Um, we're actively <laughs> working at it, uh, but for practical purposes. Um, there's also a great deal of transparency. Um, I've only just come into the council, but I was, um, you know, a member of the community beforehand. Um, and um, there were issues that I wanted to raise and um, they got through. Um, there's the problem solving forum. Um, there is the ask the, the, the council every year at the conference. And I think if we were to come to a situation where there was sort of some very, uh, you know, uh, crisis, um, everybody that I've met has been really very open to trying to, you know, find a way where we can optimize for fun. Um, so I, I don't think it's, you know, theoretically, I think that there's a, a question and we're going to try to attempt that with um, um, the governance session, which is following this one. Um, but in practical cases, that in, in all practical respects, we're, we're a very consultative community. Um, one of the questions that has just been raised is marketing or focus, focus, focus. If you've looked at the, at the problem solving uh, issues recently, um, I thought that was gonna be a question that would have been raised today. Um, because marketing and how to make Raku more available is something that also exercises everybody's minds. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons why I want to go to international, to, to have an international forum, uh, uh, international documentation site, multilingual documentation site is to make it more available. So, um, you know, I think we're all trying very hard. Martin, I see see you have your hand up. Um, did you remember one of your other questions? Yes, I think it's largely related to what uh, Richard uh, started to talk about. So like, um, I think it came up on this conference as well a couple of times that it will be good or quintessential even to get to more people and 
both as users and as potential contributors, people who can get involved in, in the maintenance of uh, Raku related technology. And therefore, this is like one and a half question, like what are uh, the plans or ideas or what is the perspective of reaching out to more people as users? And also what is the perspective to make um, existing like core language tooling and that sort of stuff uh, more accessible to people to make it more realistic to get more people involved or or how to make these things attractive to outsiders i, I hope other people will jump in on this too um, I'll, I'll give you my quick answer, which is that so, uh, in terms of what the plan currently is, is it's not something we have talked enough about yet. Um, I'm hopeful that as we get closer to the, the language re version release, that more of the community's attention and more of the steering council's attention will be directed towards, you know, forming and executing a plan along those lines, because I think that when 6D was released, that was a, a time when there was a lot of that sort of push. And I think that uh, the first language version release in, in several years is an excellent opportunity to have a, a more coordinated push. Um, but that's just my personal take. What I can tell you in, in answer to the question is so far, there has not been a ton of that discussed at the steering council level. More of our time and attention has been focused on, uh, you know, solving the technical problems and doing the the sort of more urgent tasks in the short term. And personally, I, I hope that changes, but I, I'd like to hear what other people either on the council or, or outside of it think ab about those issues. I think the plan that we had at the Rocco steering count uh, at the uh, course summit was that we should get down to about 50 remaining spec test files for Rocco ST, and then we start thinking about what what we're going to be putting uh, out uh, uh, PR-wise. Um, that's from the, I would say, from the Rocket To account. clarify PR, you mean public relations, not pull request, right? Well, the, the, the thing is that um, what, what is going to be in the release exactly is, is not actually clear at the moment. Uh, Rocco AST should be good in there completely. And should macros be in there? Question, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, it, it sort of depends on what we're going to tell in 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 in, in any any PR for for the new language release, language version. Uh, what what is going to contain? But uh, I'm open to. I'm personally open to uh, anybody would like to uh, take the PR job on because definitely. Uh, I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to do that. And uh, so somebody else in the steering council or somebody else somewhere else needs to do that. So yeah, that's the situation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, kind of more generally to when we should release and what we <clears throat> should release. I think it makes sense to in a way, it does make sense to release more often so that specifically distributions can depend on, I guess, specific versions and get that behavior in sooner. But I am like, I'm still skeptical in that if we're making these releases that don't have very much in them, there's like not a lot for us to like sell. Like, you know, there's not a lot of marketing to be done for it. And it potentially can, you know, <clears throat> it could put us in a position where like to release some feature that would have hit, I don't know, with, you know, in the middle of the year, we have to push it back. So I, I guess all I have to say is I'm really not sure. I, I, it seems like maybe we don't have enough like people doing things to necessarily like also be able to say what is necessarily going to be in a release because there's so few people working on it and their situation in life is changing and how much effort they're able to put in, you know, e.g. Raku AST at a given time. Like, that's why that sort of keeps getting pushed back. 
Uh, I know there's things that I would potentially maybe want to include, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to propose to put them in 6C or not. And if we're in a position where we have to say what's going to be in there, like, I guess I'm more inclined to just not bring it up at all. So I guess those are, yeah, I, I don't know where I stand on it. I'm just kind of throwing out some pros and cons, I guess, as I see it in relation to, A, saying what we're going to put in a release and how often, or if we should release more often. Uh, Daryl, I think it's uh, Darren is next. Yeah, so about that, I mean, given given the size and given the size and maturity of Raku, it, it's like while I mention annually, like that's sort of a goal, and it's like, um, but I think I think it can still be a lot more ad hoc. Like if a year goes by and there really isn't anything worth numbering then it could be skipped and similarly if like halfway through a year something is ready like could just do a version then rather than waiting another half a year so there's flexibility but i was basically my proposal was trying to avoid the rut that some languages get into where like a large number of years pass because you're not going to raise the number until you have some big ticket item done i'm just saying sort of get a get away from having to wait for big ticket items. That's more the point. So I, I think your your concerns that you raised, um, I think they're easy enough to accommodate. If you're not sure that something's ready, it can just be conservative and not included. Keep it preview. That's all. 